Truth Espresso, episode 132. Face it, we all would rather sleep in this morning. <sighs> That's why God gave us espresso, to kickstart our zombified corpses into hyperdrive. <laughs> And now, giving your mind and soul the morning shot of truth it craves. This is Truth Espresso with Daniel Minnick. Well, hello, this is Daniel Minnick, the host for Truth Espresso Express, coming at you with another Express episode while I drive to work. Um, that's what Truth Espresso Express is. It's uh, some extra episodes for to satisfy your Truth Espresso crave for um, some other days of the week besides Monday and so that there's more days so that you can wake up to some fresh new content. And um, this episode is going to be uh, a little different. I'm not going to just, I'm not going to be talking about doctrine. I'm not going to be talking about um, news about the COVIDs, um, actually. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit of uh, personal experience that I had this weekend. So this weekend was um, the memorial service for Bob Enyart, and my family went to uh, the memorial service there to uh, recognize and honor Bob Enyart. And I, I got to know Bob Enyart a little bit. I uh, we visited his church, uh, my family. I got to talk with him sometimes. Um, I actually was um, invited by one of uh, Bob's friends to be a guest on his radio show, Bob Enyart Live. And uh, back in 2012, I was a guest to, there to talk about my book, uh, Freedom to Give, the Biblical Truth About Tithing, and a, a recent interview uh, with Kevin Thompson of the Basic Bible Podcast about that very same book, um, planning, slating to um, release uh, as a crossover episode of Truth Espresso this next upcoming Monday. But uh, the episode is not about that. It's about Bob Enyart and the uh, memorial service that we went to. And so, it, you know, Bob Enyart was a very... Uh, influential, very bold um, apologist um, for, you know, against uh, things like abortion and, you know, like the debauchery of uh, modern politics. And uh, so I definitely honor him with that. I mean, you know, some of the things that they showed there uh, that he did in the past, you know, really, <laughs> you know, puts me to shame. It makes me feel like I should be doing more about that. So the memorial service, um, there were a lot of, there, it was a, quite a packed house there. I'm guessing that there was several hundreds of people. I did not count, perhaps um, close to a thousand people. It was a, it was a nice church there, a decently sized church that was able to hold all the people there. I know some people um, came from out of state if they were friends from out of state or possibly some who were even fans who, you know, made the trip there to attend the memorial service. And so, yeah, it was a fairly decent sized event. And, um, you know, there was a, there was this, um, you know, black brother there named Biff who uh, led some songs there. He, he was a really good speaker and, you know, it was pretty electrifying. He was, he's a great guitar player. And, you know, so when he would lead the songs, he's a good singer and, and yeah. So when he's leading the songs for uh celebration and that's what I want to say about this, it wasn't, you know, they intentionally said, this is not a funeral. It is a memorial service and it is a service for celebration. And yeah, it, it it did not feel like your typical funeral where people come in, look at um, a body in a casket and, and just weep most of the time. And 
so it was you know a a service they had um, a lot of pictures a slideshow showing a lot of things from Bob's life like you know um, while he's on the radio program pictures from that some of his vacation trips um, uh, you know being at the Ark Encounter for Answers in Genesis and yeah lots lots of different things with Bob and his family and that was pretty cool um, and so um, you know some of his family uh, his brother Brian uh, was the first one to get up and talk and yeah most uh, people who got up uh, you know even who were related to him managed to maintain their composure pretty well as they were able to uh, to talk about um, how you know how Bob impacted them and so yeah Brian Enyart his brother gave the first um, talk about Bob and you know how Bob helped him you know become a Christian and yeah that was pretty good he also they knew that you know the media is likely to get in on this somehow we were kind of expecting it I didn't see anyone with with cameras there outsiders there but the media really didn't serve him well when uh, he was uh, passing away there so yeah I'm kind of getting ahead of myself for why there is a, a memorial service for Bob Enyard so Bob and his wife went to the hospital uh, for uh, COVID and you know and I think it was I'm sure I can get some information to uh, correct this but I think it was uh, you know the pneumonia associated with COVID and um, so both of them were in the hospital for treatment and Bob um, you know didn't make it and his wife was uh, critically ill and uh, you know that that has to be really rough and his wife Cheryl there to be in the hospital be struggling with her own health and not be able to really be by her husband's side as he passes and so she has to focus on her own health and recovery you know be on uh, oxygen and so yeah we saw her at the the memorial service there too and I think she's still in shock you know it's it's pretty rough there and you know I like she still had uh, like a tube in her nose and uh, an oxygen tank there but you know they were both in the hospital for uh, a while there before he passed and so yeah I would encourage my listeners, please pray for Bob's wife, Cheryl, uh, for her uh, continued recovery and, you know, their family. They, they have a, a large family. They had, uh, I'm trying to remember how many uh, sons together, five sons, something like that. And so, yeah, there's lots of family there. And I would encourage my listeners, please pray for the family of Bob Enyart. Uh, because there, there's a lot of grieving to do, and basically the media would just delight in the fact that uh, Bob fought against, you know, ma- vaccine mandates and and stuff like that. He also fought and was successful in uh, getting some freedom for churches to assemble last year, when there was obviously the <laughs> um, hypocrisy from you know the powers that be to try to keep churches from meeting or limiting church capacity to a handful or no more than 50 when other events um, even other indoor events and stuff allowed many more people like it was clearly a bias against churches and Bob and others uh, fought in court uh, relentlessly, and they were successful in getting the court to rule that um, this is unreasonable on churches. So I applaud Bob for that. So yeah, then um, at the memorial service, you know, Biff led the songs. He was an excellent guitar player and and singer. And and then Will Duffy. Uh, perhaps some of my listeners might know Will Duffy. He's He's uh, done some uh, debates 
and he, at the end of the memorial service, gave a presentation chronicling the life of Bob Enyar, and there are a lot of things there I did not know about Bob's life early on, like in the late 80s, he <laughs> he was allowed to be employed by Microsoft for some impressive software that he wrote during Microsoft's uh, kind of infancy there, and you know I think he got to meet Bill Gates in Bill Gates' house, and as Will mentioned, the house at the time wasn't even furnished yet, so Bob had to like kind of lean on a pillar. There was no place to sit uh, while while chatting, and Bob uh, had written articles in uh, like a computer magazine uh, criticizing Microsoft uh, later on. Well, actually, he he wrote some articles in a magazine um, (laughs) criticizing Microsoft, and then um, I guess those articles were kind of devastating enough that Microsoft decided to put a stop to that, and they put a stop to that by hiring him, you know, uh, um, offering him a job, and then he, he took the job to work at Microsoft, but... I guess Bob, uh, like they wanted him to sign some non-disclosure agreement that he wouldn't share um, information about Microsoft. You know, one of those things where it's a, you know, we could we'd ha- we could have trade secrets and stuff. Um, so for the, your first year or two after employment, if you're dismissed from the job, you're not allowed to talk about it. And Bob, I guess, kept postponing it until they forgot about it and so when Bob ended up leaving Microsoft because um, there was some some unethical practice he believed that Microsoft was doing so he left Microsoft and as he left they found out that they never got a signature from him and so they were pretty panicked about that yeah. and then he went on to write uh, at least another article criticizing Microsoft in the same uh, computing magazine. So yeah, that was pretty entertaining there. And and then uh, Bob Enyart had a late night, a midnight uh, TV show. I think it was Bob Enyart Live. It, it was called that uh, as a TV show. And he, you know, he was pretty good at taking on <laughs> some callers about like political topics so they they showed a little clip there it was it was uh, pretty entertaining he was cooking some eggs in a frying pan and he was claiming that these were eagle eggs like bald eagle eggs uh, to see how some callers might react so he's frying them in a pan there but you know they weren't really but he's trying to uh, claim that they were to get uh, callers, especially, you know, he liked to agitate the political left. So there was a woman who called in who was aghast, you know, and telling him that this was a crime to cook eagle eggs. And then, so he's having a conversation with her about this and asking her questions like, why is this a problem? And it went down to uh, asking about, well, these aren't eagles, he says. You know, they're not eagles. They're just eggs. And uh, you know, so why? Uh, how could you say that I'm, you know, killing eagles? And the la- the woman caller says, well, you know, because they're eagles from conception. <laughs> and then he starts to, you know, as as Bob was good at doing, he he would he's good at leading people on to, uh, you know, really pull them in with with being a gentle you know gently letting people give themselves the rope with which to hang themselves you know um, and so you know by her call asking questions or him asking questions and getting answers then finally he's asking questions about he asks are you are you pro choice and uh, she said yes and he said well you know what about uh, babies, like what if I? You know, what about those in the womb? If they're killed, aren't they uh, humans at conception? And then, you know, so she realized the how she had get, been inconsistent with. She was freaking about, freaking out about these 
alleged eagle eggs there and protesting that, saying they're eagles from conception, so you can't cook the eggs. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, she realized that he trapped her that way. And so then he asked, so how is this different? So then she had to come up with the idea like, well, eagles eggs, you know, or eagles are an endangered species and humans are uh, overpopulating the planet. And then, yeah, so then you know she's kind of d digging herself deeper so then bob asks look okay so is it then because of that is it then okay to just kill some children to help the planet and she had she said yes and that's where the clip ended that was that was a pretty pretty startling answer there like okay so she admitted that you know just to defend her position of the eagles there of not cooking eagle eggs because it's killing eagles that okay you know humans are overpopulating the planet and it's okay to like engage in genocide of children defenseless children just to keep herself from you know being inconsistent here yeah so that was one one of the entertaining clips showing from uh, Bob and his Bob Enyart live TV show. And yeah, the, I know that the video of the memorial service they're going to make available. And so, yeah, I, once I get it, I might provide a link to it so that you could watch it. But yeah, it, it was a pretty good memorial service. Now, I will just say that there are some there are some things with which Bob and I disagree, some theological things significant differences there but you know i'm not gonna i think he did a lot of good for the kingdom of god and fighting against abortion and, and a lot of political leftist things and you know his boldness in this was impeccable he he did say a lot of good things that i i've got to give him props for and for sure you know I think, you know, despite our differences there, he's a he was a great guy and someone I can learn from, you know. So, yeah, it was it was a pretty good memorial service and I got to see some people I hadn't seen for a few years there. They are from his church there, so, you know, my family, you know, they're friends with with Bob and his and people at his church there, Denver Bible Church and so yeah, it's it was a it was a good service there, and I and the gospel was preached there, and so I you know those who were listening they had it live streamed, so those who were listening you know I'm I'm, ho I'm hoping that a lot of people did hear the gospel that they will uh, come to Jesus Christ as uh, a result of you know the memorial service and. And, um, you know, I'm praying that when one person like that goes down, many people will fill his shoes and fight evil. <laughs> and so I would once again ask my listeners, pray for the family, pray for the members of his church, pray that God will guide them, God will give them peace, God will, you know, <laughs> God will aid them and, and help them because... The media doesn't like enemies of the left, and they certainly need, you know, God's peace and comfort during this time. So that was just a a brief and rather scatterbrained, um, you know, coverage of a, a few highlights of uh, Bob Enyart's memorial service. And so I'm about to pull into the parking lot at work here. And so uh, stay tuned for more episodes of Truth Espresso and Truth Espresso Express. Thank you for waking up with Truth Espresso. Good morning, and God bless your day. Hey friends, Daniel Minnick here again. If you liked waking up to this episode of Truth Espresso, I would really appreciate it if you would rate it on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or whatever application you use to listen to Truth Espresso.